Elon Musk is a strange man, a self-described nerd with an obsession for rockets and Mars. Yet somehow he transformed a scrappy startup that once consisted of little more than a carpet and a mariachi band into a company that would go on to revolutionize the aerospace industry. This is the story of how a young programmer from South Africa became the driving force behind the new era of private space exploration. Elon Reeve Musk was born on June 28, 1971, in Pretoria, South Africa. From a young age, he exhibited an insatiable curiosity and a natural talent for technology. At just 12 years old, he created a video game called Blaster and sold it to a computer magazine for about $500, a clear early sign of the entrepreneurial spirit that would later define his career. Musk's thirst for knowledge was equally remarkable. As a child, he developed a habit of reading anything he could get his hands on. By the age of eight or nine, he had reportedly read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. His intellectual drive and global ambitions eventually led him to leave South Africa at 17, moving to Canada in search of greater opportunity and a path way to the United States. This move marked the beginning of a remarkable journey toward becoming a global technology leader after attending Queen's University and later transferring to the University of Pennsylvania. Musk earned degrees in both economics and physics. In 1995, he headed to Silicon Valley to pursue his entrepreneurial ambitions. That same year, Musk co-founded Zip2, a company that provided online business directories and maps for newspapers. In 1999, Compaq acquired Zip2 for $307 million, earning Musk $22 million from the sale. Wasting no time, he reinvested in a new venture, X.com, an online financial services platform. X.com would eventually evolve into PayPal, redefining how people conducted digital transactions. When PayPal was sold to eBay in 2002 for $1.5 billion, Musk received $180 million. With that windfall, he was finally in a position to pursue his most ambitious vision, revolutionizing space travel and making life multiplanetary. Although Elon Musk now had the money, he lacked the technical knowledge required for spaceflight. To begin closing that gap, he joined a space advocacy nonprofit called the Mars Society, an organization filled with scientists and researchers deeply passionate about space exploration, particularly the idea of colonizing Mars. But Musk was not content with just discussing possibilities. He wanted to make space exploration a reality. First, he needs a rocket. He quickly discovered that rockets were far more expensive than he had anticipated. The only available options cost over $100 million each. Despite his newfound wealth, even Musk could not afford that price tag. In search of a more affordable alternative, Musk and his team flew to Moscow. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia had decommissioned thousands of Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs, under arms reduction agreements. These rockets were well-designed and, once stripped of their nuclear warheads, could be repurposed as orbital launch vehicles. The plan seemed promising, but the price was still steep. The Russians wanted $8 million for a single rocket. Musk was willing to pay that amount, but only if he could get two rockets for the price. The Russians refused to negotiate, and the meeting ended with Musk walking out in frustration. That experience led to a critical realization. Only about 3% of a rocket's cost came from raw materials like aluminum and copper. The rest was tied up in inefficient processes, outdated practices, and bloated subcontracting. Musk began to see that by streamlining rocket design and manufacturing, and by bringing most of the work in-house, he could drastically cut costs and build a rocket for a fraction of the industry standard. By applying vertical integration, using inexpensive commercial off-the-shelf components when possible, and adopting a modular approach similar to modern software engineering, Elon Musk believed that SpaceX could dramatically reduce the cost of space launches. In early 2002, Musk began recruiting staff for his new company, soon to be called SpaceX. He approached five individuals for the company's initial positions. Among them were Jim Cantrell and John Garvey who would later go on to found Vector Launch, rocket engineer Tom Miller, Chris Thompson, and Mike Griffin, 
who declined the offer to become chief engineer. Among the group, Tom Miller stood out. He had been passionate about rockets since childhood, building model rockets and experimenting with propulsion systems for years. At the time, Muller was working at TRW, a well-established aerospace company. Although he wanted to move fast and innovate, TRW was cautious and reluctant to take big risks. When Musk invited Muller to join his startup, Muller hesitated. Leaving a stable, well-paying job for an unproven venture was a serious decision. But the opportunity to freely pursue his passion, combined with Musk's bold vision and intense drive, ultimately convinced him. It took real courage to walk away from corporate security and join a brand new company, led by an unconventional entrepreneur with ambitions that seemed sky high. Not many people would have had the nerve to take that leap. The early years of SpaceX were defined by relentless effort and rapid expansion. By November 2005, just three years after its founding, the company had grown to 160 employees. Elon Musk personally interviewed and approved every early hire to ensure the team shared his vision and tireless work ethic. SpaceX's journey, however, was anything but smooth. Musk still had dreams of reaching Mars, but he knew that goal was far out of reach at the time. The first rocket the company built had a more modest purpose, to deliver a half-ton satellite into orbit. Reusability, something that would later become a cornerstone of SpaceX's strategy, was not yet part of the equation. They named the Rocket Falcon 1, inspired by the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. Funded internally, Falcon 1 was a small, two-stage, expendable launch vehicle. Its total development cost was estimated between $90 and $100 million. In March 2006, Falcon 1 attempted its first launch. It lasted just 41 seconds before crashing due to a fuel leak. The second launch in 2007 went slightly better, but still failed to reach orbit after a series of problems caused by an unexpected bump during stage separation. The third attempt was another disappointment. A timing error during separation caused the rocket's two stages to collide. By that point, Musk had nearly exhausted the funds he had allocated to SpaceX. The repeated failures were devastating, and morale within the company hit a low. With his resources dwindling, Musk made a bold and risky choice. He split the last of his remaining funds between SpaceX and his other venture, Tesla, giving each just enough to survive for one final attempt. What kept Musk going was a thread of hope. NASA was preparing to award a $1.6 billion contract for 12 resupply missions to the International Space Station. While established aerospace giants were expected to compete, NASA had expressed interest in considering a startup like SpaceX. Fortunately, SpaceX had one remaining rocket sitting in its Los Angeles factory. The team quickly prepared it for flight, renting a military cargo plane to transport it to the launch site. After some last-minute repairs, the rocket was ready. This time, everything went according to plan. The rocket reached orbit successfully, making SpaceX the first private company in history to design, build, and launch a liquid-fueled rocket into orbit. It was a defining moment, not just for SpaceX, but for the future of private spaceflight. Following the success of Falcon 1, SpaceX quickly expanded its ambitions. The company went on to develop the larger Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon spacecraft, both designed to deliver cargo to the International Space Station, ISS. In 2012, SpaceX reached another major milestone. Dragon became the first privately owned spacecraft to dock with the ISS. This historic achievement proved that private companies could not only launch satellites, but also carry out complex space missions that had previously been the exclusive domain of government space agencies. One of the most groundbreaking elements of SpaceX's strategy was its commitment to reusability. Traditional rockets were built for one-time use, making spaceflight extremely costly. Musk and his team set out to change that by engineering rockets capable of returning to Earth and flying again, a concept that promised to dramatically reduce the cost of reaching space. On December 21, 2015, SpaceX successfully landed the first stage of a Falcon 9 rocket back on Earth after deploying a payload into orbit. This achievement marked a fundamental shift in the economics of space travel and established SpaceX as a leader in the new era of reusable launch systems.
By this time, SpaceX was in a much stronger position, and Elon Musk began thinking seriously once again about his ultimate dream, sending humans to Mars. Building on the company's success, SpaceX introduced several concepts for reusable super heavy lift launch vehicles. These early designs went through multiple iterations and names. In 2012, Musk publicly revealed his intention to develop a rocket more powerful than the Falcon 9. SpaceX initially called the project the Mars Colonial Transporter as its primary goal was to carry humans to Mars and return them safely. By 2016, the name was changed to the Interplanetary Transport System, reflecting plans for the vehicle to go beyond Mars and support missions deeper into the solar system. The proposed design included a carbon fiber structure, a fully fueled mass exceeding 10,000 metric tons, and the ability to carry a payload of 300 metric tons to low Earth orbit while being entirely reusable. In 2017, the concept was temporarily renamed the BFR. I won't explain the acronym, but longtime SpaceX followers would know what it stands for. If you also know, put it in the comment below. In December 2018, SpaceX changed the primary structural material of its next-generation rocket from carbon composites to stainless steel. This shift marked a major transition in the evolution of the Starship design. Elon Musk cited several reasons for the change, including lower cost, easier manufacturing, increased strength at cryogenic temperatures, and better heat resistance. By 2019, SpaceX began referring to the entire launch system as Starship. The upper stage was called Starship, while the first stage booster was named Super Heavy. As the design evolved, the number and configuration of engines on the second stage changed significantly. By that year, the second stage had settled on six Raptor engines, three optimized for sea level operation, and three for vacuum conditions. To reduce overall weight, the number of aft flaps on the second stage was also reduced from three to two. On April 20, 2023, Starship attempted its first orbital flight test. The launch ended in a mid-air explosion over the Gulf of Mexico before the booster could separate. During ascent, multiple engines in the Super Heavy booster failed, which caused the vehicle to reach maximum aerodynamic pressure, or Max-Q, later than planned. Despite the dramatic failure, Elon Musk and his team celebrated in the control room. Musk referred to the test flight as a success. For SpaceX, the fact that such a massive spacecraft was able to lift off the ground on its very first attempt was a major milestone. The flight provided critical data on what worked and what did not, helping SpaceX refine the Starship program and move closer to its long-term goals. To date, there have been nine Starship flight attempts, each with its own mix of successes and setbacks. The Starship program is currently facing challenges and progress has been slower than hoped. However, many still believe that SpaceX has what it takes to succeed. The company has already endured some of the toughest phases of development. In May 2025, Elon Musk stated that there is a 50% chance the first Starship mission to Mars could take place as early as next year. While that timeline may seem optimistic and unlikely to many, it reflects Musk's continued bold ambition. To some, his attitude might appear unrealistic, but to SpaceX employees, it serves as a powerful source of motivation. They know their leader refuses to give up. Musk has consistently shown that with vision, innovation, and relentless determination, even the most ambitious goals can become reality. For SpaceX, not even the sky is the limit. 